This is Paul Lucas inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions. Proudly we hail. And now, another proudly we hail. One of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Paul Lucas, and presented transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Paul Lucas. Thank you, Kenneth Bagpipe. Our play is entitled The Key and the Cloak. The scene, somewhere behind the Iron Curtain. Time today. Our story, a tale of hunters and the hunted in the game of international intrigue. Our first act curtain will rise after this important message. I have an important message for intelligent young men. A new United States Army regulation now permits you to apply for OCS, Officer Candidate School, before you enlist. That's right. If you're at least 19 years old and can meet the physical and mental standards for Army officers, regardless of whether you're a high school graduate, you can go to your recruiting station and volunteer as an officer candidate. You will take basic training, attend leadership school, and then go to the next available class at OCS. You will be promoted to corporal when you go to OCS, and upon graduation, become a second lieutenant in the United States Army with good pay and allowances for food and quarters. Young American women have the same opportunity to become officers in the Women's Army Corps, but to better act now, for no one knows how long it will be before our growing army has all the officers it needs. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and get all the facts today. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Key and the Cloak. from east to west and back again with little trouble. One man who could was the composer-pianist Stefan Donner. Donner's life was music, and outside of that, very little else mattered. He made that point clear time and again. Only a handful knew better. Drink? Yes, sir. I'm going. It shouldn't take more than an hour. I wish you'd let me come along, too, sir. No point in both of us walking into it. Well... What do I do if you're not back by midnight? Oh, never mind midnight. If I'm not back in time for the concert tomorrow night, notify the police. You shouldn't have too much trouble in getting out. If I may say so, sir, I'd wait another day. You may say so if you like, Ring, but you know as well as I that it's got to be done now. If it's Videcki, we owe that much him. But what assurance have you that it is Videcki? Only that the cart had no errors. If they had caught him and made him write it, He'd have made at least one minor mistake to warn me. We take the car? No, I'll walk. I've always felt for this sort of thing, it's much safer to be on foot. Well, Rink, if anyone calls me, I've gone to bed. Don't wait up for me. Please, be careful, sir. Always, Rink. Always. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Fine night. The moon should be up later. About 1.30, I think. Get these to our friends. Very important. I may have been followed, so go carefully. Thanks again. Yes. Good night. Good night to you, sir. Oh! Get the other one. There he goes. Friends, please open the door. Please, you must excuse me. I mean no harm. But who are you? What do you want? Get out of here off screen. 
I don't mean to stay here. Just show me out the back way. The back I... way? There isn't any back way. That's the only entrance. What? You... The police? The street is beginning to swarm with them. They're looking for you? I try not to make a habit of breaking into people's homes. I came up the stairs, and yours was the first door I came to. Would you mind turning out that light? What have you done? There, that's better. Now, how many stories in this building? Three more, I think. Thank you. I'll be on my way. Thanks for being so understanding. What will you do? Go across the roof. You can't. The buildings on either side have wide alleyways, and they're taller. That's no good. What about the back? Well, that's no good either. A factory wall. And the only way out is the way I came in. And right now, I'm afraid that will have to wait, too. Hadn't you better come away from the window? They can't see me with the light out. What are they doing? Searching the street now. What's at the end? It's a dead end. The river runs past. Oh, I seem to have picked the perfect place to get caught. Now all they have to do is search the buildings and they've got me. Well, I have no right to stay here and endanger you. You've already been extremely understanding. What will you do? If this building has a cellar, I'll go down there and try to get out that way, perhaps to the river. Why are they after you? I haven't the slightest idea, madam. Also, I have very little time, so let me say that I thank you for your hospitality from the bottom of my heart and bid you a pleasant good evening. Wait, wait, don't be foolish. Look, look there, they've got the street locked up. They know you're here somewhere. I'm afraid so, but I have no other alternative. Look, it's all the houses. In fact, they've started down there, see? It won't be long before they come here. Perhaps perhaps before they do, we can think of some place to hide you. Madam, you are very kind. Now, but... listen. If they find you here, I'll tell them that you threatened to kill me if I betrayed you. Don't worry. I can make them believe it. I'm an actress. And a very cool one, may I add? <laughs> Someday I'll show you my notices. My name is Karen. What's yours? Well, I'd seen you somewhere. Let's call me Carl. Well, Carl, I think we'd better start getting you tucked away. Why are you doing this? Because I want to. You are not afraid, are you? I think that's the first thing I noticed about you. You are not afraid. I said I was a good actor. What about this closet? It's big. There are a lot of clothes in the back. No, it's no good. Let's see. Uh, what is out there? Mm, kitchenette. The bath is there. You live here alone? Mm, there are two other girls. They're away on tour. Let's have a look in the bedroom. Mm, we better hurry. Hounds are baying. What's that? Another closet? Yes. Hmm. What's under this? A steamer trunk. We just pile everything on it. I wonder if I could fit in it. Oh, it's worth a try. It's a pity that fool sergeant gave him a warning. He'd have had them both. How many buildings have you covered? No, three on each side, sir. Would you like to lead the search in the next one? Yes, Captain, I think I would. A man should keep his hand in. myself. You seem to be looking for something. Did you lose something, Colonel? Captain Ansgar, your papers. Don't be rude, Captain. Here they are. You may search. You live here alone? No, there are two others. They're away. Uh, who are they? Where are they? What an abrupt man. <laughs> Doesn't he frighten you, madam? He likes to frighten people. Frankly, he bores me. Who are you and what is all this about? I'm Sedlick and we're looking for a man. Have you seen him? Of course. I've got him hidden in the icebox. Madame, be careful how you talk. Captain, when in the presence of a beautiful woman, act like a man, not a bull. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to you, Captain. And if you're through with my papers, I'd like them back. Thank you. <laughs> a cool one. A real cool one. It's so rare that you meet one anymore. Well, now I am flattered. I hope your men aren't going to tear up the floorboards. If I think it's necessary, madame. They'll do that, too. Sir... There's a trunk in the closet in here. We can't get it open. But where are the keys, boy? I don't know. It's not mine. What are you looking for, anyway? A pygmy? Well, whose trunk is this? It belongs to a girl named Lisa Rennick, and she's away. 
Break it open. Now, wait a minute. This is ridiculous. And you're even more ridiculous, you little puppet. You <laughs> think that you can... <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, Anska, if you could see your face. My dear, you have something that there is a great lack of today. I believe the Americans call it punk. Please, sir, there's little time to be wasted. All right, Anska. All right, it's your show. You mean you're going to let him ruin a perfectly good trunk? A man could be hidden in it, you know, my dear. All the other rocks. What? Why would... Why should I want... Break it open. Let us still shoot the lock off. No! Anything? Nothing but clothes, sir. Now are you satisfied, you stupid ox? Madame, shut up. No trace anywhere, sir. All right, outside. Take the next. All right, outside. Take the next. What a bunch of fools. Madame, forgive us for inconveniencing you. I, for one, enjoyed meeting you. Did you ever feel in need of work? Here is my card. You are the type of person I can use in my organization. I can assure you, Mr. Whoever you are, I don't plan to become a snooper for you or anyone else. Good night and good riddance. All right. Can you climb in? Another ten seconds, and I couldn't have held them any longer. I'm not very good at hanging from window ledges. I heard shots. What happened? You were right. The trunk wasn't a very good idea. Help me up. If you have a drink, I could use it. That makes two of us. Now what? Now all we can do is wait and see what their next move is. They've got me in check, but it's not made yet. Starring in the role of Stefan Donner in the proudly we hail production, The Key and the Cloak. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Did you ever stop to wonder why your United States Army has such a long tradition of victory? Well, the secret is a very simple one. It's training that pays off. Old soldiers will tell you that it's good training plus the best leadership that spells victory. Your United States Army has always emphasized both. Visit the United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station in your neighborhood and learn all the facts. Enlist in the United States Army today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, we present the second act of The Key and the Cloak. had your search the entire block. Nothing. No trace. I can't understand it, sir. I can, Anska. I can. I put you in charge of shadowing one of their agents in order to catch two. I did it knowing the first agent was carrying valuable information. What happened? You'll make a mess of it right from the start. You kill this Videcki and let the other fellow get clean away with the information. But sir... don't interrupt. You've wasted half the night already, Anska. I trust you have sense enough to know you're in a spot. You insist your man went to Earth somewhere in this block. You've made a thorough search, and you still insist he's here. All right. I'm not arguing with you. I'm going home to bed. Fortunately, I have no one to answer to about all this. But you do, Anshka. You do. I can't tolerate inefficiency in my organization. You realize that, of course. It's now... Almost midnight. You have 24 hours to produce the man and the information. If you fail, it's you who'd better go to work. Good night, Captain. Good night, sir. <laughs> Can you see what they are doing now? Yes, they are in some kind of a hollow. Do you think they'll search again? They are very persistent. If they still think I'm here, 
They'll take the block apart. But they've already searched. Well, there's nothing to stop them from being more thorough. They are apt to bring in searchlights and light up the whole place. They might bring in a couple of hundred more men and then take each building apart, brick by brick. You don't sound very optimistic. It's better to count on the word. It's better to never underestimate them. You know them, don't you? <laughs> as long as they don't know me, I don't mind. Why don't I fix some coffee? You must be hungry. You're very kind and a very brave girl, Karen. I think I'd better leave now while things have cooled off a bit. Carl, don't be a fool. You're safe here as long as they don't come again. And if they do, we'll think of something. And what about that coffee? Well, there's nothing I'd like better, but if they should come suddenly, they might find two cups. Well, and... just use one. <laughs> you think of everything, don't you? If I did, I'd be home in bed right now. I wish I could remember where I've seen you. Don't. It's better that you shouldn't remember. But why? Do you think I'd ever tell? No, Karen. You'd never tell. I'll get the coffee. Good. I'll keep an eye on things in the streets. Oh, what time is it? <clears throat> Ten after one. Why don't you go to bed? They don't seem to be doing much of anything down there, just patrolling. No, if they should come again, you'll need help. If they come again, Karen, I... What's the matter? Uh, it looks like they are bringing trucks in, searchlights. They brought in more men. They are going to search every building simultaneously. Quick, the window in the kitchen. No good. They'll have lights in the alley, too. That sounds like checkmate. No, no, the trunk. Get in the trunk. I'll hang clothes over you. Now hurry. Again, can't you let the girl get some sleep? Out of the way. You men, in there. What's this trunk doing here in the middle of the room? It's just where your friends who were here before left it. And if you'll notice, you big ox, you'll see that it's been ruined. Those are bullet holes, and these are clothes. Yes. Shall I take them all out? Or would you rather like to shoot at them, too? Maybe they'll crawl out with their hands up if you do. Ah, woman, get out of the way. Go to bed. Go to bed. How can anyone go to bed with bullies like you running around Be wild? Still. Find anything? No. All right, out, out. Hurry it up. Don't lock your door. We may want to come back and see you again. I certainly will lock it. Then we'll break it down and have you thrown in jail for interfering with police business. Who's going to put that trunk back in the closet? <laughs> and the queen saved the game again. <sighs> I'm limp. You are the finest actress in this whole world. I had begun to think my luck had run out. That it was all bad. But coming here to your door in this building and this block was the luckiest thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> you make me blush, Carl. The longer I'm in this business, the more I know it's people like you who keep people like me alive. I do not know if I had been in your place and you mine, that I would have been so, so sympathetic. Ah, yes, you would. So would most of us who have not had all the decency scared out of us. Whatever I can do to defeat them, I'll do gladly. For you or for anyone. You don't know how few there are like you. Ah, you're wrong, Carl. Perhaps it's hidden down deep under the surface with most, but it's there. A man or a woman with children or, or a man with a woman alone has more than himself to think about. You can understand that. Naturally. You have saved my life twice this evening at risk of your own. And there is no way in which I can repay you or show my gratitude. And knowing that you fight them and that I've helped you to fight them is enough. Now, let's stop this. Hadn't we better make plans for the next time? I don't think there will be a next time. This last search has convinced them that I'm not here. Where do you work? I have a small part in the play. We're rehearsing now. Oh, you should have the lead. <laughs> well, in other words, you'll go out in the morning and return in the evening? That's right, about six. Good. Now, I want you to do something for me. Hmm? Only this time, there will be no risk. I'll give you a number to call. A man will answer. Mm -hmm. You will say a diversion should be created at the entrance of Tolvac Place at exactly 7 o'clock. And if it is not created, there may not be a performance. That's 7 o'clock tomorrow night. Right. What will you do in the meantime? Stay right here until you come home. If that's all right. Of course. You'd better tell it to me again in the morning before I leave. I don't know whether my head is working right. 
I'll do that. And now, please go to bed. I'll sit here and watch. Should they come again, I'll go back in the trunk. I can't argue. I'm half asleep now. But don't worry. If they come again, Carl, I wake up quick enough. Good morning, Captain. Anything to report? Mm, looks like you've been barking up the wrong tree, Anska, and wasting a lot of valuable time, too. What do you plan now? I see. Your stubbornness is admirable, even if your logic isn't. What would I do, Captain? Well, now, I really couldn't say. That is your investigation, not mine. All I expect are results. I won't take any more of your time. You don't have too much of it left. <laughs> Goodbye, Captain. Carl? Carl, it's me. Oh, there you are. I'd rather you put that gun away. Oh, I beg your pardon, Karen. I'm afraid I fell asleep. <laughs> and then I heard the door opening, I... Uh, how did it go? What's going on out there? Well, they still have the street blocked off. Everyone who goes in or out has to show us papers. And, of course, they search you. But from what I could see, it looks like they've shifted their search to the adjoining blocks. I'm very surprised they still think I'm around here. I heard one of the guards talking. He said this whole area right down to the river had been alerted even before you came. You walked into a trap. One I still seem to be held in. Did you get... Uh, did you call that number? Yes. Your friend seemed quite worried. He said that the performance must go on and a diversion would be created regardless of the circumstances. Now, would you mind telling me what it all means? It means that just in 20 minutes, I'll be bidding you goodbye, Karen. How? I mean... I have a day to day search. If I'm not there for it, my goose is apt to be cooked whether they catch me here or not. My friend is going to draw the hounds away from the tent while I head for the river. Well, then you better let me fix you something to eat before you go. <laughs> You are wonderful. And leave your top coat and hat. I'll take care of them. I wish there was time to know you better. I wish it was possible to... Oh, no matter. Yes, Carl. No matter. Well, Karen, this is goodbye. I go down to the first floor and wait by the back entrance. I'm glad you came here, Carl. Good luck, always. To thank you would be impossible. Tell me, do you like music? Good music? Uh, yes, but why? Well, I just noticed that I have a couple of tickets here to a concert tonight. Do you have a friend who would like to go with you? I think so. Who's giving the concert? That Donna fellow. That's from Donna? Why, yes, yes, I'd like to go. Well, it'll take my mind off. Oh, things. Goodbye, Karen. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Hello, Ring. Oh, oh, sir, you had me worried after Jeff. What happened? Was the diversion a success? Success? I wondered if you planned to blow up the entire block. Where did you get hold of that thing? I made it, sir. I had a bit of this and a bit of that. Noisy, but perfectly harmless. They gave me quite a chase. Me too, Ring. <laughs> me too. You, uh, you look slightly damp, sir. It comes up swimming the river. Help me get out of these things. We mustn't keep our audience waiting. Make the music he does. It's incredible. Karen, yeah. what's the matter? Why are you crying? Don't tell me the great Stefan Donner made you cry. Why? Ah, good evening, madame. You remember me? 
I am Cedric. I came calling last night. Oh, yes, yes, I, I remember you. It's a pleasure to find you here. My estimation of you continues to rise. He's wonderful, is he not? This Donna, what I wouldn't give to have a man like that working for me. Absolutely ruthless. Absolute. <laughs> I've said something funny, no, madame. No, no, no. I just wondered what he might say if you asked him. Did you catch what you were chasing last night? Uh, I'm afraid not. And now I've got to catch Anshka. What a business. Think over what I asked you. Good night, madame. <laughs> Who was that? That, my dear Mark, was a policeman. A secret policeman. <laughs> Would you mind telling me what's so terribly funny? Why, he missed his calling. He should have been a comedian. Paul Lucas will return with a word about next week's show in just a moment. Here's some great news for intelligent young men. Your growing United States Army needs qualified young officers, and a brand new regulation says you can apply for OCS, Officer Candidate School, before you enlist. You must be at least 19 years old and able to pass the mental and physical exams for Army officers. A high school diploma is your best qualification. If you're accepted, you'll take 14 weeks of basic, then to leadership school for eight weeks, and be sent directly to OCS. You'll be taught many interesting subjects, and it'll be a great day when you line up for your commission. You'll be proud to be an officer in the United States Army with good pay and allowances for quarters and food. This is a great opportunity for young men, and you should take advantage of it now. If you think you can make the grade, get all the details at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Enlist today. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly we hail stars Paul Lucas. The Key and the Cloak was written by DeWitt Cuff. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnier. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilson. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Paul Lucas. We cordially invite you to join us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled The Last Trap. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>